Hi, my name is Keith Cooper, North Light Images, and in this video I'm going to do a very quick look at why you might want to use a shift lens. That's the shift part of a tilt shift lens. Now I've got another video which I'll link to in the notes which looks specifically at tilt, but tilt is a bit more difficult to show, it's a bit more difficult to convey the precise uses of it, so this is just about shift. Now, I've got the camera set up. I'm filming using an EOS RP with a 24mm Canon TSE 24 tilt shift lens. Now, I'm shooting this f3.5. Um, it doesn't, you know, I don't need to do it at that, but it just makes focus differences a little bit easier to show on video. If I want to show tilt, it's not really enough of an aperture. Um, I do have, as I say, an example using a 50 millimeter lens, tilt lens, which shows the tilt much more, but this is just about shift. Now, the camera's set up looking slightly down at, at me and I'm pointing it towards these two seats here. Now, I've got an extra light. Uh, it's one of those days where the lighting is varying quite a lot, uh, bits of cloud and various, so apologies for the uh, occasionally variable lighting. I will try and correct it to some instant, but um, I don't have as yet much experience of shooting in lighting conditions like this. This is not my normal office. Now, camera's pointing down. The thing to notice with the 24mm widish angle lens is these vertical lines in the conservatory. Now if you look at the image, you've got a divergence. Now you get this, and I use this lens a lot for architectural photography, if when you're shooting pictures of buildings, when you tilt the camera upwards, you get buildings with converging lines. When you look down on things, you get the diverging lines here. Now, I've set this up. I'm going to go to the camera and change the tilt. And so you can see the difference of what happens. Now, hopefully I'll be able to get uh, you know, something which makes it nice and easy to see. Well, there we are. I'm looking down. I'm now going to level the camera. It's on a ball head here, so excuse the slightly awkward movement. Now there we go, we've got all the verticals nicely straight and what's not to like? Well, um, you couldn't be out, if I go and uh, sit over here, you'll see now that the camera is pointing up the top here. I need to shift the lens downwards and I'm now going to apply downward shift. So I now have as much as I can remember the approximate viewpoint I had before. So now the camera is effectively level, but I've shifted the lens downwards. Uh, look at the verticals. You should be able to see that it's changed somewhat. Now I'm going to now put the camera at a lower height so it's looking up the reverse of this. And you should be able to see pretty easily why you would use shift. Right, the camera is level again and pointing about here, but you can probably see why I want to add a bit of shift. I could move it up, I'll point the camera upwards first, but then I'll revert back to level and then add a bit of shift. So there we are with the camera level. If I want to just raise the viewpoint a bit, I can, and you can see that we get quite a bit of convergence. I put the camera back level. I can now add vertical shift. So there we have vertical shift. I can set the camera level and then I can alter up down depending on where I want things. So maybe down a little bit there, maybe up a bit. There we are with the camera shifted upwards. So you've got a bit more of a view of the top. And that's what basically you use a shift lens for. You point the camera where you want to point the camera and then you shift the lens to get the composition the way you want it. I'll just show an example of sideways and diagonal shift, both of which can be useful, but are just a little bit more difficult to appreciate how you're going to frame things. They change the apparent perspective. So there we are with no shift. If I want sideways shift, I can rotate the lens on its mount and I can shift. There we go, that's diagonally off to one side, diagonally down. 
Now I can add quite a bit of shift and then rotate the lens back and you'll see that the overall perspective changes quite a bit. Now, camera's pointing over here. Um, I've got lots more videos uh, looking at aspects of this. I've got articles about it and I've even written a book about using tilt shift lenses. But hopefully that gives you a relatively quick idea of some of the uses you can have for using shift. It really does make a lot of difference. Now, as an architectural photographer, I use it all the time. If you're shooting interiors, it's useful. In fact, it's good for landscape, for wide angle, because when you shift upwards, the camera's level, so you don't get trees at the edge going in like that. Now, as I said, the camera's pointing over here, and we're using shift to get me into the view. As you can see, distortions, well, it's up to you to decide what you want to do with it. Anyway, hope that's been of some use. Please do ask some questions if you've got any. Um, if you want any more sort of little bits like this, explaining aspects of tilt shift lens use, then just let me know. So uh, thanks for watching and please do subscribe to the channel.